Sometimes it's impossible to get rid of unwanted guests. Has a vampire invited herself to dinner? There's one way to find out. They say a witch's spirit lives in this cave. Won't get away. But it might be safer not to go searching. Is this an ordinary covered bridge? Or the way to the next world? The time has come to welcome the night visitors to Truth or Scare. Are the night visitors. Even people who say they've actually met these mysterious spirits have no answer. There are places where voices are heard, visions are seen, and explanations are nowhere to be found. If the stories are true, then the ghosts of the past are here now. And they only come out at night. Did you hear something? Yeah. I think we better leave. You have to be fearless to go walking in these woods at night. Here, in rural Tennessee, uh -huh. they say an evil power has been haunting the area for centuries. Thank you, better leave. <coughs> Welcome to the Bell Witch Cave. Today, the curious and the very brave still come here, ghost hunting. And they still tell the story of John Bell and the witch who tormented him. In the spring of 1813, John Bell moved his family to the town of Adams, Tennessee. John and his wife Lucy and their kids Richard, Drury, and Betsy got settled into their new home. For the first few months, their lives were pretty peaceful. But soon, that peace was shattered. A mysterious presence entered their lives that no one can explain to this day. They heard sounds and felt tremors on their property like an earthquake, but it was only happening around the Bell's home. The noises were terrifying. Weeks went by. Outside the house, the noises were getting louder. Then, one night, the horror moved inside. Richard Bell wrote about it in his diary. A noise commenced in our room, like a rat gnawing vigorously on the bedpost. There was no such thing as sleep to be thought of until the noise ceased, which was usually about three o'clock in the morning. Richard Bell. These people that were witnessing this event, they were not crazy, they were not strange. They were very ordinary people for the time, and what happened to them was not ordinary. Whatever it was tormenting the Bells, it turned violent. First, they kept quiet about it, just a family problem. But eventually, the terror overcame them. They had to get help. John Bell called in James Johnston, a religious man who thought they might find a solution in the Bible. Johnston's method was direct. He interrogated the evil force and demanded answers. <laughs> the nightmare was only beginning. Apparently, she had been disturbed. The reports say she was heard throughout the house, 
laughing and taunting. <laughs> Word spread quickly through town. The locals started calling the awful thing the Bell Witch. We'll never know why the witch, or whatever it was, hated John Bell so much. <laughs> But according to witnesses, she swore to stay on him until the day he died. <laughs> it was a tragic mix-up that finally ended Belle's life. Somehow, a jar of medicine he was taking got filled with deadly poison. The doctor was brought in to investigate. His conclusion? Accidental poisoning. People at the time did not believe it was an accident but rather the work of the Bell Witch. It was said the witch haunted John Bell to his grave. At his funeral, they say that her singing and laughing was so loud, no one could even hear the pastor's eulogy. After John Bell's funeral, the family moved far away from Adams. The house sat empty for years. But the Bell Witch could be more than a story. Some say that she's a part of the land, a spirit that has been here forever, and still is, somewhere underground. 10 years ago, Chris Kirby and her husband bought the old Bell Cave. Some say they got more than they bargained for. I've heard some things in there that really you shouldn't be hearing in a cave. I've heard growling sounds in there. I've heard what sounded like a scream. I, I know it's hard to believe, but until you've witnessed it yourself, it's, I know, I know there's something there, but I just don't know what it is. There's still something that exists here today that I can't explain, nor can anyone else. The memory of these strange events will live on, although we may never know the truth. As terrifying as the old stories are, it's even scarier to wonder if the Bell Witch might return someday. What happens when the dead won't rest in peace? Find out when we dig up the story of America's last vampire. Next on Truth or Scare. Discovery Kids. Most people would probably say that vampires come from Transylvania. There are people all over the world who tell stories about the walking dead and monsters who feast on human blood. There have also been reports of vampires much closer to home, not so long ago. In the late 1800s, Rhode Island was known as a center of weird, supernatural activity. Believers felt the presence of restless, hungry souls. And a certain type of deadly American vampire was on the loose. Or so they said. It was the late 1800s, and death was stalking New England. A mysterious epidemic was killing thousands of people. No one had a clue where it came from. Some called it consumption. Others named it the White Plague. In small remote villages like Exeter, the disease spread like wildfire, passing from one family to another. It was the winter of 1883 when George Brown lost his wife, Mary, a slow, painful death. Then, one by one, his children each got the terrible disease as well. His daughter, Olive, lying in bed, 
sick and weak, was haunted by nightmares. She dreamt about a shadowy figure who would steal her breath and drain her life force. George's son Edwin was next. He also suffered from more than the illness. In horrifying dreams, his breath and blood seemed to be sucked from his body. It got worse. As Edwin lay at death's door, his sister Mercy became violently ill. And soon, she passed away. The town was gripped by fear. What was spreading the plague, and who would be next? They found no answers in science. So, they turned to folklore. They started to suspect that their enemy came from the supernatural realm. And if the living couldn't come up with a solution, maybe the answer lay buried with the dead. Town elder William Rose made an emotional appeal saying, the undead must be returning from the grave to feed on the living. His prime suspect was one of the Brown family. He convinced George that there was only one way to save his son Edwin, dig up the bodies of his wife and children. George Brown said he would. Even the most prominent members of the community believed in the malevolent spirit and gathered at the graveyard. No one, rich or poor, was immune from the desperation of the times. First, they unearthed Olive and her mother. They are just dust and bones. Mercy was next. The men pulled her coffin from the ground. What they saw was too shocking for words. The truth was now clear to the townspeople. Mercy was the vampire who had been stalking their nightmares and dwindling their numbers. According to their beliefs, her heart had to be removed and cremated. Otherwise, she would continue to claim even more lives. The task of performing the ritual fell to Dr. Harold Metcalf. The townspeople hoped that this act would not only stop the vampire from returning, but help save the sick as well. Desperate to save their friends and loved ones, they made a potion with the ashes and gave it to Edwin. It didn't work. Less than a week later, he passed away. Whether she was a vampire or not, after Mercy Brown was put to rest for the second time, the epidemic of consumption in Exeter, Rhode Island, came to an end. Coming up next, this mysterious covered bridge seems to span the waters of time. And on the other side, they say, a lonely ghost is waiting for all eternity. when Truth or Scare continues. The Gaggle will be back on Discovery Kids. This Halloween, take a wild ride to the frightfully funny side with the biggest Halloween adventure. Get it. <laughs> the Gaggle is back on Discovery Kids. It is said that the night visitors come in different shapes and for different reasons. If the evidence is true, and there's an endless variety of spirits out there in the netherworld, like this young woman, forever waiting for a man who never arrives. The Goldbrook Bridge gets its name from the narrow stream that runs underneath it. For decades, prospectors in Stowe Hall, Vermont, have been panning for gold there. But the bridge is the real treasure for people who want to meet a ghost. 
According to the local legend, back in the 1850s, love was in the Vermont air. A young farm girl named Emily met a young man, and pretty soon she was in over her head. One day, they decided to run away together and get married. Wait for me here tomorrow, he tells her, and I promise to take you away forever. So she waited. And waited. The hour slipped slowly away, but still no sign of her boyfriend. Depressed and alone, Emily made a vow to herself. She would never let anything like this happen again, ever. I think her hopes were just dashed. By, by midnight, the hours had ticked away and she became more and more desperate. And she saw no alternative than to take her own life. Legend says that she was taken to the village cemetery, but after a century and a half, some people believe her spirit may be somewhere else. It's a very eerie feeling. People have gone to the bridge and have seen a figure, and they can hear her calling out. Help. Help me. Today, the locals know it as Emily's Bridge. Help. Have a look inside, they say. And if it's just the right kind of foggy night, you just might catch a glimpse of the past. On this windswept cliff, a medieval castle is home to mysteries from the past. Is it also home to ghosts? When Truth or Scare continues. Hey kids! Imagine living in your own castle. Would you ever want to leave? Inventor John Hammond and his wife believe so strongly in the afterworld. Witnesses claim their spirits never left the castle grounds. Could they have discovered the secret to eternal life? Here on the coast of Cape Ann, Massachusetts, this building is hiding bizarre secrets. On the outside, it looks like a medieval fortress. But there are no knights or crusaders here. The spirit of John Hayes Hammond, they say, could be found anywhere in his castle. He's been called everything from a gifted inventor to a mad scientist. His castle walls kept the world out and his secrets safe. Hammond was a strong believer in reincarnation. In some experiments, he tried to unlock the secrets of life and death. Over 30 years after his death, it looks like he's not going anywhere. In 1926, Hammond built this seaside fortress as a safe haven for himself and his new wife, Irene. This was a strange wedding present, but then again, Hammond was a very strange man. Inside, everywhere you look, are strange relics of the past. Some say they make this the most haunted castle in the United States. The artifacts that the Hammonds brought back from their travels fill the house with a strange presence. The caretaker, Richard Gordon, has witnessed strange things himself. You see shadows and images um, in the building. Noises, whisperings. Hammond may not be the only spirit who likes it here. Hammond's wife was also a believer in the spirit world. 
She died several years before he did. Once she was gone, the mysterious sightings increased dramatically. They have um, heard the voice of a woman in a room. They have seen a woman go from one room to another room and then have summoned the maintenance people to go into that room to see who that was, and there was nobody there. How do you really explain it? Unless you had an experience like this, how do you explain it? There are those who believe Hammond himself still walks these halls. The mysterious sightings hint at something we don't quite understand. John Hayes Hammond seemed determined to solve the mysteries of the supernatural. How well did he succeed? We may never know. At least, not in this world. So, who are the night visitors? The inventions of superstition? Or forces beyond our understanding? Whoever, or whatever they are, many people say they are intent on making contact. It seems like they might have something to tell us. Or maybe they're looking for answers themselves.